thank you this morning. Father, we thank you for just being in your presence, oh God. We thank you for your glory being here, oh Lord. Father, we pray right now that you just do a mighty work in us and through us, oh God. As the word is being brought forth, Lord, that your people will hear from heaven, oh God. That they will hear that it is not the preacher speaking, but it is Jesus speaking through the preacher. Oh, Father, we pray right now for what you're going to do. We glorify you for who you are. We bless your holy and righteous name. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. You may sit. And so as I said before, we are in a new sermon series, which is entitled The Blessed Life. And we're in part number one. The part number one is entitled Blessed to Be a Blessing. This series is to encourage us to use our blessings to be able to bless other people. Every single person in here has been blessed by God. You may not have everything that you want and everything that you desire, but each and every one of us have been blessed by God. And my question this morning is, what are you doing with your blessings? What are you doing with the things that God has given you? Are you using those things only for you and your family? Or are you honoring God with your blessings by blessing other people? I encourage you to use what God has given you to be a blessing to others. We see this very concept in our scripture this morning as we look into the book of Romans. To where we see how one commentary says that the book of Romans is known as the Believer's Magna Carta. The reason why is because within the book of Romans, we see the liberties that Jesus has given to everyone that believes in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. And not only do we see the liberties in the book of Romans, the book of Romans also is a letter of introduction to the church in Rome for the Apostle Paul. At this time of the writing, the Apostle Paul has never been to Rome. As a matter of fact, many people thought that he planted the church in Rome, but he didn't start it there because when you read the letter, we know that he is sending the letter before him to say that I want to come to see you. Paul was letting him know that he's planning to get there. He's eager to go there. He tells him in, in, in chapter 1 of the book, verse 15, he says, So as much as is in me with everything I got, I am ready to preach the gospel to you who are in Rome also. And from chapter 1 to basically almost to the end of the book, Apostle Paul is writing about doctrine. He's, he's writing about what we should believe. You need to find out what you need to believe. And he also writes about sanctification, how you need to live. It's not just about what you need to believe, but it's also about how you need to live. He writes about how we need to think and how we need to act in the book of Rome. But when we get to chapter 15, he, he brings up a topic again about him wanting to come to the church in Rome. He says in verse 19, he says, From Jerusalem and all around about Illyricum, I have preached fully the gospel of Jesus Christ. He says, all throughout the eastern half of the Roman Empire, I have told people about Jesus. I've started churches. I've done work in eastern half. Now, listen here, I'm ready to come over to y'all because I got something else I need to do. He says in verse 23, he says, but now no longer having a place in these parts and having a great desire these many years to come to you. Not that Paul had preached to every single person throughout the eastern part of the empire. He didn't do that. But what he did was he would go start churches in, in, in major cities all throughout the eastern half of the Roman Empire. And then he would train people to take his place so that when he moves, he will leave a church in that area. He says, I, I, I've done that. I started churches in those areas, in those cities, so now they can go and reach the city and the other surrounding areas. He says, I'm done now. I'm done with that half of the empire. Now I'm ready to come to you in Rome. If you're taking notes, I want to give you some points today, all right? Point number one is bless people by finishing your assignment. Bless people by finishing the ministry that God has given you. Paul, before he moved to another area, he made sure where he was was finished. 
He, he did everything he was supposed to do in that area. Then he moved on. Listen, if Jesus tarries, if Jesus doesn't break the sky sometime soon or tomorrow, every single one of us is going to move on. We're either going to move to another location or we're going to move on to heaven. You're going to move somewhere if Jesus tarries. And the question is, are you going to finish what he told you to do before you move on? God has told each and every one of us something we need to do inside the household of faith. And not only is it that you're doing it well right now, but if you leave, will it fall apart? See, there's a problem within the church. The problem within the church is that we think that as long as we do the ministry good and well enough that it works good while we're here, then it don't matter about what happens once we leave. Jesus didn't think that way. The apostle Paul didn't think that way. He says, well, matter of fact, I want to make sure when I leave, this thing is still working. You finishing your assignment isn't just about you finishing well. It's also about are you training somebody to take over what you have been doing? Paul trained people. You got to train people to learn how to work in the ministry. You got to train people on how to love folks who don't love them. Because that ain't easy. Isn't it? Being a Christian is not easy. Helping people who don't want to help you. Being there for people who are going to talk about you. Being there for people who will not help your kids while you helping their kids. It ain't easy following Jesus. So you got to be trained on how to do this stuff. Paul says in verse 24, he says, when, Whenever I journey to Spain, I shall come to you. That the, Rome, the church in Rome was only a pit stop for the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul had somewhere else he was trying to go. He wanted to go over to Rome so Rome can be his base of ministry while he ventures over to the west portion of the Roman Empire. Paul wanted to cover the Roman Empire with the gospel of Jesus Christ. He wanted everybody in the empire to hear about Jesus. He wanted every part of the empire to have a church that represented Jesus Christ. So point number two is, bless people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Do you know how to share the gospel? Do you know what the gospel is? That's why we have Mission 401 class every second Saturday. So that you can learn how to share the gospel. So that you can tell people about Jesus. So that you can be able to walk someone through the plan of salvation. What if they, they, what if, what if they can't make it to church and they're about to die and you are at their hospital bed? Don't call Pastor Steve, I may be late. Gotta try to get off work. But if you're there, you should be able to walk them through the plan of salvation. I don't care. A, a, a bad side salvation is still a salvation. So Mission 401 class is all about trying to help you learn how to share his story, the gospel, and your story, your testimony. And not only should we be sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with people, we should be inviting them to church. Inviting them to come to the place where the presence of God is with the people of God as we teach them the gospel of Jesus Christ. Listen, there's something about being in the presence of God's people. There, there's, there's something about being in a place where, where God is being glorified and Jesus is number one and everybody is on the same page looking towards Jesus. Something happens. And I want to encourage you, when you invite people, don't be pushy. Don't, don't, don't throw them a guilt trip. You just be excited about God. You, you, you just be excited about what God is doing. You don't, you don't have to be pushy. You ain't got to do a guilt trip. You just be excited about Jesus and who he is. And you be persistent. You just keep on inviting. Listen, I encourage you, don't give up on your family. I know they told you no before, but don't give up on your family. 
Don't give up on your friends, on your co-workers, on your neighbors, on your classmates. Don't give up. You just keep on being persistent. And Paul says in verse 24, he says, For I, I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you, if I may enjoy your company for a little while. Point number three is, bless people with your fellowship. Bless people with you being around people. Bless people by them getting to know you and you getting to know them. Paul says, I, I want to come to Rome because I want to be in your company. I want to get to know you, and I want you to get to know me. Who are you fellowshipping with in the church? Within Mount Calvary. Who, who are the people who you're who are you getting to know and they're getting to know you? Who, who are those people who, since you have come here, you didn't know them before, but now you know them because you have been fellowshipping with them. They, 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 they're getting to know you and getting to know your family. And listen here, we have opportunities here at Mount Calvary so that you can fellowship. We have opportunities here so people can get to know each other. Specifically, we have small group Bible studies to where you can get to know somebody else and somebody else can get to know you. Listen, we got three on Sunday morning. So if you don't like that topic here, you can just shop around. Find one you like. We, we got one on Sunday, on, our, on Wednesday evening. That's four Bible studies where you can say, which one do I like, which one I don't like, and you can get in one where you can know people and people can get to know you. And listen, teens, we even got one for you. Sunday morning, we got, we, and listen here, right now it's only a half an hour. You can come and find out what God is doing for you. And we say, well, Pastor Steve, every Sunday you know that's kind of a lot. Come into church every single Sunday for small groups, that's kind of a lot. Or, or on Wednesdays, every Wednesday, the Bible says that's a lot. Okay, if you want baby steps. Once a month, the men get together for fellowship. Once a month, the women get together for fellowship. And if you need baby steps, we got baby steps for you too. So that you can get to know people inside the church. You ain't got to take big steps and put your whole body in the water. Put a toe in, but just keep it in. Don't put it in and take it out. No, no, no. Put it in, keep it in. Because every time you take it out, the water get cold again. But if you put your toe in, that joke will start getting warm. You know what I'm talking about. Listen, if you don't know people here at Mount Calvary, it's not because Mount Calvary isn't offering opportunities for you to get to know people. It's because you're not taking the step to get to know people. And we are a place where we make opportunities available, but it's up to you to take the step. I believe in producing self-feeders. I, produce, I, I, I believe in making people grow up and take the next step for themselves. We, the opportunities are here. But you got to do something to move forward. The Apostle Paul says, now before I come to you in Rome, I got to go to Jerusalem. But before I get to y'all, I want to come to y'all real soon. But before I go there, I got to go to Jerusalem. Because the, the, the Gentile churches over in Macedonia and Acacia, they, they, they've raised money for the poor saints in Jerusalem. The church in Jerusalem, they, they, were, they were mostly Jewish believers in Jerusalem. And, and they were a struggling church, struggling financially. And, and, and God had blessed many of the Gentile churches, and they had raised money. Those Gentile churches raised money because they were blessed to be able to send money to another church. Oh, you don't hear that too often. Send money where? Oh, no, player. No, no, we need all that here. But sometimes we need help other churches. That's why we have that leadership conference, so we can bless not only Mount Calvary, but we can bless other churches. That's why we are, we're training people, because one day some of y'all are going to leave. You know, some of y'all called the ministry, the preaching ministry. And you cannot stay Jonah. 
You are not going to bring us down with the water because you're being disobedient. If God called you to preach, you better come up here and get some training so that you can move on to wherever the Lord has you to go. They were happy. Listen, verses 25 and 26, Paul says, they were, they were pleased to give. They were happy. They were like, hey, man, let me get in on this offering. Let, let, me, let, me, let me give you something so that you could be able to bless the church in Jerusalem. They were happy to give. Are you happy to give? Are you, are you excited to give your tithes and offerings? Are you eager? I can't miss church, not for the preaching, not for the singing. I got to give my tithes. I got to give my offering. Yeah, Pastor Steve may tell a joke that's great. I got to put this paper in. Are you happy to give so that we can reach more people with Jesus? So that, so that, so that, so that more people can give their lives to Christ? Or are you grumpy to give? Like, I really don't want to give to that church. Are you happy to give so that people who are saved can be matured in their faith? So that they can be able to learn how to love God more and learn how to love people more? Or do you grudgingly give? Grudgingly giving is, is basically giving while you say, you know what, I really don't want to do this because I know where I can use this money at. I can, I can really use this, this money so I can buy me some new shoes. I can really use this money so I can, you know, I don't know, I don't know, I can go take me another vacation. You've been on five vacations. I need to take me another vacation. Or are you happy to give? Listen, giving your tithes and offering is not a punishment from God. It's not God punishing you because you've done something. Giving your tithes and offering should be a privilege to you. Not that you got to, but that you get to. Totally different mindset. See, when you, when you got to, like when you got to go to work, you walk in without a smile on. When you got to go somewhere, you show up and not be nice to people when you got to. But when you get to, you walk in with a smile on. You're like, hey, y'all, how y'all doing? I, I, I get to be here. I'm allowed to be here. I get the privilege to be able to give. Not that it's a punishment to give. It's a privilege because you, you get to use the financial blessings that God has blessed you with. This is not your money. I know you work for the money, but it's not your money. All the silver, all the gold, all the currency belongs to God. And he, and he blesses you with it so that you can be a blessing to others. So that you can help the church reach more people for Jesus. So that you can help the church mature people so they can follow after Christ. So that you can be a blessing with the church as we bless other people. So point number four. Be a blessing by faithfully giving your tithes and offering. Faithfully. Consistently. Diligently. Every time you get paid. Not every other time. You give every time. Not because you got to but because you get to. The scripture lets us know that the Gentile churches, Paul says that they are indebted to the church over in Jerusalem. Listen to what he says in verse 27. He says, for if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty, their obligation, their responsibility, their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Paul says, listen, if the Gentiles' churches have been blessed because of the Jerusalem church, they need to do something for them. Well, you may say, well, how, how did the Jerusalem church help the Gentile churches? 
Because first off, Jesus was a Jew. Jesus was not a Christian. He was a Jew. We are Christians because we follow after Christ. Jesus, the Christ, was a Jew. And he went to the Jews first. The, many of the Jews got saved first. Started the church. And then they sent out Jewish Christians to go to the Gentiles. They took the message. Jewish Christians took the message out to the Gentile churches to tell them about Christ. So therefore, it is their, Paul says, it's their duty. It's their responsibility to give financially. This applies to us as well. If you are being blessed spiritually from Mount Calvary, you need to give monetarily to Mount Calvary. If you're being fed spiritually and you are growing, you are maturing, your life is changing, guess what? Not that you have to pay for the blessing, but it should be your privilege and your duty to give so that other people can receive what you're receiving. Listen, this sermon is not a guilt trip. I am not going to beat you down. And if you know me, I don't always preach about money. But every once in a while, we got to talk about some stuff. It's not a guilt trip. This is biblical stewardship. Because God cares how you handle his stuff. He cares. And you and I, we have the, 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 the privilege and the responsibility to give financially to the place where we are being blessed spiritually. Listen, a part of your responsibility as a Christian is to help the place that is feeding you. As a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, your responsibility is to give of what you have so that we can continue to reach more people. And listen here, don't, don't you know, pull that mess on me. See, that's why I don't go to church. Because every time I go to church, you come once a year. Every time I come to church, they always talk about money. It's just so when you came that time, we was talking about money. But see, that's why I don't go, and that's why I'm not a member of them churches, because all they talk about is getting money. But what, what, what is so funny, what, what kind of cracks me up, is that they don't say the same thing about the strip club. They don't say the same thing about the casino. They don't say the same thing about the mall, or the restaurants, or the movies. Or even those other nonprofit organizations. People don't say that. Oh, they just want my money. Let me let you in on a little secret. All they want is your money. That's all they want. The mall, all they want is your money. The restaurant, all they want is your money. The movies down the street, all they want is your money. You want to know why? Because when your money run out, you ain't watching that movie. When, listen, when your money run out, guess what's going to stop? The dancing. The food. Listen here, you go to, you go to the strip clubs, lap dancing stop when the money run out. You, listen here, you ain't getting no lap, nothing. Them chips at the casino, yeah, they stop flowing when your money run out. No money, no service. Ain't no money, no product. I don't care if you were selling drugs. No money, no product. You can't get what I got for nothing. But listen, that don't happen at Mount Calvary. Whether you have money or don't have money, we say, come on. Whether you got it or you don't got it, we say, come on. This is not about money. This is about privilege and responsibility. Christians are givers. Period. Christians are givers because our God is a giver. Our God gave to us. Our Savior 
is a giver. He gave to me. He gave to you. Hence, we need to give back to him. Listen, if you're not pleased to give, if you don't feel a responsibility to give, there's an issue with your relationship with God. Ain't a problem with the church. There's a problem with you and Jesus. Because Jesus is not Lord, not only just Lord over your soul. He's Lord of your life. And your life includes your pocket. It includes your wallet. It includes everything that he has given you. Jesus is Lord over all you have, including you. And so Paul tells him, now listen, when I drop this money off over in Jerusalem, I'm coming to Rome. And I'm coming to Rome because I want to get to Spain. I, I want to go to the other side of the kingdom. Listen to what he says in verse 30. He says, now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me. He says, listen, I need y'all to, to strive with me. I need y'all to strive for me. Strive means to do your best. I, I, I need you to, to, to do everything you can to pray with me. He said, I don't need you to do everything you can to give to me. I need you to do everything you can to pray with me and to pray with me for me. <laughs> do your best to pray with me, Paul says. Do, do your best to pray for me, Paul says. Not one of those casual prayers. Every once in a while when you remember type of prayer. And as you're praying for everything else, then you mention me. Not that kind of prayer. But a purposeful, intentional, continuous, focused prayer that you talk to God on a continual basis for me. Paul says, I want you to, I want you to do this work with me to be praying for me. Do you know we have prayer meeting here every Wednesday? Every Wednesday evening, we have a prayer meeting here where we are praying for each other and praying for the church and praying for the community. And in July, we're going to do another 21 days of prayer. To where every Sunday morning, we will be here praying together. I want to encourage you in July that you make it your responsibility your obligation, yes, even your duty to come and pray with the church. So point number five is bless people by praying for them. Bless people by praying for them. The Apostle Paul, he, he asked him to pray in three areas. In, in, in the first, in the beginning portion of chapter, uh, uh, verse 31, it's called the A-clock. Listen to what he says. He says, that I may be delivered from those in Judah who do not believe. Listen, people wanted to kill the Apostle Paul. Not just put him out of church. They wanted to take his life. Paul says, I, I want y'all to pray that they don't kill me. So the first area I'm asking you to pray for is to pray for the church leaders here at Mount Calvary. Pray for the leadership here at Mount Calvary. I mean, all of them. Yes, pray for Pastor Steve, because Pastor Steve crazy. Pray for me. Pray for me. I mean, get on your knees. Not while you're driving. Not while you're walking in the park. I need some intentional prayer like Jesus. Help that man. Right? I mean, get on your knees and pray for me. Man. But not just the pastor. But pray for the ministers. Pray for the deacons, the trustees, ministry leaders, small group teachers. Pray for the leaders here. 
if the Apostle Paul needed prayer, if Jesus needed prayer, the leaders at Mount Calvary need prayer. And we need y'all to pray for us. Listen, your, your, your leadership here at the church are sinners saved by grace. We mess up. And the only thing that keeps us on the straight and narrow is the grace of God. So pray for us. The, 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 the last portion of verse 31, it says, And that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints. At this moment, now, remember now, the Apostle Paul is taking money from the Gentile churches to the Jerusalem church to help the poor in Jerusalem. He says, he says pray that the saints in Jerusalem will not get offended because some Gentiles are trying to help them. Pray that they receive this gift with open hearts as it has been given with open hearts. Pray that these folks in Jerusalem don't get offended at other people because all they're trying to do is help. Understand now, receiving the money, it wasn't just about the money. But receiving the finances was not just about the finances. If they were to receive the finances, they would be receiving the Gentiles. It's bigger than the money. Because if, if they receive the gift, they're saying, we receive you. We accept you. Paul says, pray the church be unified. Pray that people accept one another. In Christ Jesus. Listen, we're all different. We all have different opinions. We all have different proclivities. We all have different ideas. But the one thing that, have in, that we have in common and that is most paramount is Jesus. And if we can't fall in line under Jesus, what are we doing? He said, pray that the church is, is unified. So that second area I'm asking you to pray for is the church's unity. That Mount Calvary be a unified church. That, that we're not split over me, meager and minor things. That, that, that we don't get off into secondary stuff that has no purpose really at all. That people at Mount Calvary won't get offended when new people come. Or when old people come back. That they won't get, that, that Mount Calvary won't get offended when people come, they get saved, they join the church, they start working in ministry, and they begin to become in leadership. That people here at Mount Calvary won't get offended. Pray for unity. That, that, that we will work together. Because here's the thing, God is sending folk. And folks are getting saved at Mount Calvary. And people are joining here at Mount Calvary. And people want to work here at Mount Calvary. And those people will become leaders in Mount Calvary. So we got to pray for the unity of Mount Calvary. The last area he says to pray for is in verse 32. He says that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. He says, listen, pray that I get to you. Pray that I get to Rome. Because Paul's mind, if I can get to Rome, I can get to Spain. So, so, so pray that I get there and I can fellowship with you. Pray that I reach you. Here's the thing, Paul did not get to Spain. He'd get to Rome. But he didn't get to Rome the way he thought he was going to get to Rome. He actually got to Rome not a free man, but in chains. He got to Rome as a prisoner. But that did not stop the importance of him asking for prayer to get to Rome. Just because you don't know how it's going to turn out don't mean you need to stop praying. He he got there 
and he asked him to pray that he get there. Basically, he says, pray for me and pray for the mission. Pray that I get to Rome and that I get to Spain. Pray that I get to plant new churches all throughout this empire and more and more people can come to know Jesus. Pray for the mission. The third area I'm asking y'all to pray for is to pray for the mission of Mount Calvary. Pray for our church's mission, which is to make disciples of Jesus Christ who love God and people. Pray that God will help us stay on task. Pray that God helps us to stay focused. Pray that God will enable us to reach more people. Listen, there's always room for one more. It's always, there's always room for one more person to come into service. There's always room for one more person to join your ministry. There's always one more room for someone, one more room for one more person to come and pray with you. There's always room for one more. What happens if we have 500 people? There's always room for one more. What if we got 1,000 people? There's always room for one more. There's always room. There's always room for somebody to come and kneel at the foot of the cross. There's always room. Pray that we never lose sight of what's most important. There's, there's things that are, that are important, you know. There's, there's secondary things that, that, we can, that we can look to and we can, we, can, we, can, we can try to do right by and make sure that we're doing it. But we can't lose sight of the main thing. The main thing is keep the main thing the main thing. And the main thing is making disciples of Jesus Christ. The main thing is that we're helping disciples to grow so they can love Jesus more and they can love people more. Because the more you fall in love with Jesus, the more you need to be falling in love with people. Because Jesus, guess what? Of people. And if you're here today and you don't know Jesus, I'm praying that you get saved. I'm praying you give your life to Jesus. I'm praying that you will see the glory of God in Jesus the Christ. That you understand the very fact that he loves you so much that he left glory to come to earth to shed his blood for you. To die for you. To be buried for you. To come back to life three days later just for you. I pray that you don't leave here saying I can do it tomorrow. I can do it another day. But today is the day of salvation. Today repent of your sin. Today ask Jesus to forgive you. Today believe that message that he shed his blood for you. He died for you. He came back to life three days later. Believe that message and confess Jesus and make him your Lord. And salvation can be yours. If you want to give your life to Jesus, I just ask you to say a prayer with me. Let us bow. Father, in the name of Jesus, forgive me of my sin. Father, I believe you sent Jesus. I believe he died on the cross. I believe he came back to life three days later. Jesus, I make you my Lord and my Savior. Now, Father, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray, Father, that you will help us use our blessings to be a blessing. I pray, oh God, that we never forget who gave us the stuff we have that we will bless you as we bless other people, that we will honor you while we help people, Father. We thank you for what you're going to do. And we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.